All right, so it's a great pleasure to welcome you to the Royal Society and uh, to this meeting. Uh, as I said, my name is Brian Hoskins. Um, it's uh, very appropriate for the meeting to be here because the Royal Society, uh, led uh, by John Shepherd, produced a report in 2009 on geoengineering, and that was quite a surprise to many that they, the Royal Society did this, and it was an extremely influential report. And... Um, and got a lot of publicity. And one of the outcomes from this was the research councils putting together an opportunity for research projects. And the three projects we're going to hear about today arose from that. And I gather there was also a Royal Society meeting here in 2010, uh, so almost exactly four years ago in November. So there's a, a lot of history in this at the Royal Society, and it's great to have this meeting here today. Um, and it's fair to say this is a pretty controversial area. And I thought I was going to slip in at the back and just sort of hear where we are, and I, I've now been thrust up as introducing this. But um, anyway, so um, I, mean, I suppose many of us had the thought, this, this sounds inherently bad, and um, it's going to, going to really deflect from mitigation. Please don't tell any of the politicians there's a chance they could do something like um, geoengineering, um, and this would really stop their efforts towards mitigation. And clearly we're going towards the... Uh, the road to Paris now 2015, but if we look at the IPCC report, in all the two degree and possibly three degree scenarios, there's really almost zero emissions of carbon dioxide by the end of the century. And because some areas will be extremely difficult to uh, remove the greenhouse gases, it really implies some sort of negative carbon technologies. So carbon dioxide removal is certainly there implicitly or explicitly on the international agenda now. When we come to uh, solar reduction management, then this is, I think, still extremely controversial and um, raises many issues uh, about the science, the technology, the politics, and the ethics of this. And uh, really, many people would wish that these were not discussed, but I think it really is... Very, it is right for us to discuss these issues without nef necessarily seeing this as advocacy that this is done. And I think that's the spirit of this meeting here. It's certainly why I was coming to, to find out about where we are on all these issues and what the, the thinking has been in these three major research projects that have come over this period. So as I say, I was going to sit quietly at the back and listen to where it is, but it's going to be fascinating now to to actually hear where are we and where are we going in this area. So without further ado, I'm going to sort of lead into the first session. I'm not going to chair it. They're going to hand seamlessly from one to the other, and I'm, I'm sure they will ask for questions, and if they don't, I will interfere. So uh, I'm sure that will make them do so, but I'm sure they were going to anyway. So there's the three major projects involved here then. And the leaders of those projects will be talking to us. So we'll start off with Dr. Matt Watson and then go to Professor Piers Forster and then Professor Steve Rayner, who are going to introduce these projects, tell us what has been achieved and perhaps open some discussion on them.